You might be wondering what guidelines in test construction has to do with our presentation. Well, in this discussion, we will be discussing about the importance of test construction, the purpose of test construction, the guidelines in test construction, and the basic principles of the test construction. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am your teacher, Marlon Abat Shumbawa. I am teacher, Karen Zagari. I am teacher, Pauline Kiril E. Villegas. I am teacher, Jenny Rose B. Torres. I'm your teacher, Erika Joy Eligores Suleiman. Why is it important to construct your test following the guidelines? Well, the reasons why it is important in constructing tests is to determine the length of the test question, the format in writing the test to help us organize everything, level of detail required in answers, and the time frame for returning results to the students. Dapat ibigay mo ng maaga yung results ng test for them to review para malaman nila kung saan sila nagkamali for them to review again the questions for them to understand the question maintain consistency between goals for the course methods of teaching and the test used to measure achievement of goals for example um, class at time emphasize review and recall information then so can a test okay if class time emphasize analysis and sentences synthesis then the test can also be designed to demonstrate how well students have learned these things. The purpose. So what is the purpose of this test construction? Okay, the purpose of test construction is to measure and develop the learning goals to be more precise and accurate as what teacher wants to intend to measure and evaluate. And also to assess achievement of learning outcomes. And also to develop their art of planning, preparing, administering, scoring, statistical analyzing, and reporting results of tests. Now, let's move on to the guidelines in a test construction or the test items. So, the following are some guidelines that you should use for preparing test items. First, writing multiple choice test items. Second, closed answers or objective tests. Third, essay exams. Or grading as a exams. So let's uh, talk about the writing multiple choice test items. Writing multiple choice test items. For the continuation of the discussion, here are the general rules used in multiple choice test items. Recognize that these are general rules, but not all rules are applicable to all types of testing. So here are a few additional guidelines to keep in mind when writing multiple choice test items. Each item should be as short and verbally uncomplicated. Give as much context as is necessary to answer the question, but do not include superfluous information. Be careful not to make understanding and the purpose of the item a test of reading ability as much as possible. Um, the question should be a short and verbally not complicated in order for the students to make it easier to answer the question quickly. Ava avoid unnecessary information. Keep each item independent from others. Don't give the answer away to another item. Dapat iwasan natin gumawa ng mga choices wherein may kita agad yung mga sagot in the next items. We should do it randomly. If items require computation, avoid items that are dependent on one another. Avoid giving tests items na yung tipo na kung anong sagot sa una ay yung din sagot sa pangalawa. If one or, mo or more al alternatives are partially correct, ask for the best answer. Narang talaga mga instances na during examination, mayroong mga choices na feeling natin ay parehang tama and we can't able to choose kung alin ang pinakatamang sagot. Kaya naman sa mga instruct instructions na nababasa natin during examinations, lagi sinasabi na, choose the best and right answer. If an omission occurs in the stem, it should appear near the end of the stem and not the beginning. For example, during exam, sometimes meron mga items where yung mga tanong is very crucial to answer. Kaya naman, in making multiple choice test items, dapat sa question pa lang, dapat naiintindihan na to make it easier for the students to answer the question quickly. All alternatives should be homogeneous in content, form, and grammatical structure. As much as possible, you have to prepare choices that are clear and concise in content and grammatically correct to avoid distractions. Use only correct grammar in the stem and alternatives. Avoid wording directly from a reading passage or use of stereotype phrasing in the key. Eliminate excessive wording because that will confuse the students and lead them to waste time. Avoid terms such as always or never as they generally signal incorrect choices. 
avoid items based on personal opinions unless the opinion is qualified by evidence or a reference to the source of the opinion. Do not use none of the above as a last question when the correct answer is simply the best among the choices offered. Ang option po na ito kasi is doesn't help the student or learner to test what is the correct answer, but only he or she knows that the provided choices are, aren't correct. And lastly, try to avoid all of the above as a last option. Close answer or objective test. It is a direct to the point answer or you can just choose between the choices given. So, by objective, this handbook refers to tests made up of multiple choices or multi-op. The A, B, C, D up to Z. Matching type. Or you can just give an instruction about the matching type. They can just draw a line to match the answer to that question. Like um, the column A and column B. Next, fill in. Next, true or false. In true or false, if just they need an uh, explanation about it, a simple, a brief explanation about it, uh, maaari mo na lang ibigay direct to the point. Next, short answer items as objective test. So in short answer, hindi mo na kailangan paligoy-ligoy dito. You can just, um, or requires a three, um, two to three or two to five sentences. Next, if you can answer a question with the, uh, only yes or no response, then you are answering a closed-ended type of question. Example of closed-ended question are, are you feeling better today? May I use the bathroom? So this is just an uh, example of yes or no. Essay exam. So what is the importance of essay exam? Essay exam provide a better indication of pupils' real achievement in learning. The answers provide a clue to nature and quality of the pupils' thought process. That is, we can assess how the pupils present his ideas. The purpose of essay exam is to teach every pupils or student to think critically. Critical thinking helps pupils or students to develop their analytical skills. Here are a few additional guidelines to keep in mind when writing essay exam. First, be specific. When you are writing essay exam, you need to clearly your essay question. Lalo na pag elementary, ang mga tinuturuan mo para hindi sila maguluhan sa tanong. Second, use words and phrases that alert the student to the kind of thinking you expect. For example, identify, compare, or critique. Here, you need to put some words that they are familiar and so that it's easy to understand. Third, indicate three points or time limit the approximate amount of time students should spend on each question and the level of detail expected in their responses. So dito, maglagay ka ng time limit each question but you need to be aware sa time na ilalagay mo. Dapat nakadepende pa rin dito sa essay question na ginawa mo. Fourth, be aware of time. Practice taking the exam yourself or ask a colleague to look at the question. Dapat aware ka sa ilalagay mong time at i-finalize mo yung essay exam na ginawa mo or pwede ka rin magtanong sa teacher na kasama mo if tama ba o sakto ba yung nilagay mong time para sa essay exam nila. And the last is, have in mind the processes that you want measured. Dapat isaisip mo ang mga prosesong gusto mong malaman at sa ganun ay hindi ka mahirapang gumawa ng essay exam or essay question. Grading essay exams, um, ito yung pagbibigay ng grades sa mga students sa kanilang isinulat, which is yun yung essay. So, doon ka magbibase mismo. So, if you give grades sa essay, dapat um, magbigay ka ng comments sa essay na ginawa nila para, mas, para sa ganun, is mas ma-improve pa yung learning nila. So, here are a few additional guidelines um, to keep in mind when you are grading essay exams. So, sa number one is dapat yung mas prepare the criteria para ma-determine mo kung ano yung hinahanap mo. So, sa number two, dapat make a scoring guide which is doon ka mismo mag-base at para na rin maibigay mo kung ilang points each essay question. Sa so, number three naman is holistic means kasi you evaluate all the answers as a whole. Ang validity, reliability ay mga konsepto upang masuri at matiyak na may kalidad ang kinagawang research tool o test questionnaire. Sa pamamagitan ng validity at reliability, may papakita ang kahusayan na yung ginag ginawang instrumento upang makakuha ka din ng eksaktong data para sa strength ng study mo. And the last is standardization designed to be taken by many students within a state, province, or nation and sometimes across nation. For example, teachers may have to remove all the posters in charge from the classroom walls. Read direction out loud to student using a script and respond to student question in a specific manner.